Section 3.4 is about OSPF version 2 and its configuration. Before we discuss OSPF, let's review the functions of a dynamic routing protocol first. First function is route discovery. Routers use routing protocols to learn about available networks and their paths from neighboring routers. Next is path calculation. Protocols employ algorithms to determine the most efficient path to each destination network, often based on metrics like distance, bandwidth, or delay. Next is routing table updates. Routers maintain routing tables that store information about the best paths to different networks. Dynamic protocols automatically update these tables when network conditions change. Next is convergence. When a network change occurs, like link failure, dynamic routing protocols initiate a convergence process to recalculate routes and update routing tables, ensuring traffic continues to flow efficiently. Network routing protocols fall into different categories and classes based on the scope they have and the algorithm they use. Let's discuss the different categories and see where OSPF falls. Let's get started with the categories based on scope. There's two major categories based on their scope. First is Interior Gateway Protocol or IGP and Exterior Gateway Protocol or EGP. IGP is a routing protocol used within the boundaries of a single organization. Examples of routing protocols used for IGP are RIP, EIGRP, OSPF, and ISIS. And EGP is a routing protocol that exchanges routes between different organizations. Today, BGP is the only exterior protocol in use. Then, there's the category based on algorithm. Routing protocols can be separated into three classes, distance vector, link state, and hybrid. Let's start with distance vector protocols. A distance vector protocol is a dynamic routing algorithm where each network router sends its entire routing table to its neighboring routers. The neighboring routers then forward their routing knowledge to their adjacent routers and so on until each one learns everything. Routers using distance vector protocols are only aware of their directly connected networks and the networks reachable through their neighbors. They determine the best path based on metrics like the number of hops or routers a packet needs to pass through. Examples of distance vector protocols are RIP and IGRP. Next are link state protocols. A link state protocol is a dynamic routing algorithm where each network router sends information about the state of all its connected links through a process called flooding. In the end, all routers know the entire topology. Link state protocols generally converge faster than distance vector protocols after network changes occur. But this comes at a cost of higher resource consumption. It requires more CPU and memory resources due to complex calculations and large database maintenance. Examples of link state protocols are OSPF and ICE-ICE. Cisco also created their proprietary protocol, EIGRP. It's a hybrid routing protocol that combines features of both distance vector and link state protocols to provide fast convergence and efficient routing. Let's now discuss OSPF, which is an example of a link state protocol. OSPF uses a mathematical algorithm called Dijkstra's SPF algorithm to determine the best path to every IP destination in the network. It is also open standard, which means it works with multiple vendors. OSPF has a process, which is a set of operations on a router that enables it to run the OSPF routing protocol, which involves discovering neighbors and exchanging link state advertisements or LSAs to build a topology map. 
This process allows routers to maintain a consistent and accurate view of the network, calculate optimal paths, and dynamically adapt to network changes. By default, the OSPF process is disabled on all Cisco IOS and IOS XE devices. To enable OSPF, a process ID is required. The process ID is locally significant and it distinguishes different OSPF processes running on the same router. And it can be any integer from 1 to 65,535. The process ID doesn't need to match all routers within the network. When you enable OSPF, you can specify the process ID in the global configuration mode. We can use the command router OSPF10 where 10 is the process ID. Once we enable the OSPF process, the device first tries to assign a router ID. An OSPF router ID is a unique 32-bit number formatted like an IP address. That identifies each router within an OSPF domain similar to a personal identification number for the router. OSPF process can't generate and send messages without a router ID. Here are the steps when assigning router ID. First, the router checks if a router ID was configured. We can use the command router-id like 10.10.10.10 in this example. If no router ID is explicitly provided, we can move on to step 2. For this step, the router tries to use the highest loopback IP address, which is not in the admin shutdown state. And if no loopback interfaces are configured, we can move on to step 3, which is when the router selects the highest IP address of any active physical interface. Once the OSPF process on a router has successfully chosen a router ID, it starts sending hello messages on all OSPF enabled interfaces. And once router exchange hello messages, they become OSPF neighbors. The neighbor model has two primary functions. First, it allows routers to dynamically discover new OSPF routers on a shared segment without requiring manual configuration from a network administrator. And it allows the routers to exchange their link state network knowledge.